Hi there. It's me, Free Spirit. Oh, it's spring. It's spring. It's so warm. And it's soon going to be the kickoff for a lot of through hiking. So it's the 2019 season. And there's a lot of people starting on the Pacific Crest Trail, which is in my neck of the woods. It starts in Mexico at the, at the border. And it goes all the way to the Canadian border. And it's a beautiful, magnificent trail. And I've done a lot of day hikes and short backpacking trips, a little section hiking of the Pacific Crest Trail in California. And I would love to do more. And I would love to get into Oregon and Washington State and see all the places that the Pacific Crest Trail crosses. So in honor of that, I'm going to do a little homage to my good old days. <laughs> this is basically an antique here. This is my old backpack. And um, I'll put a link in the description to the video I made almost a year ago with my new backpack. Well, my more of a day day hiking or one or two night backpack uh, to show the difference in the way things are made now. Everything's ultra light, and we look at every gram and ounce that we're going to carry, so that you know you could go farther, stay on the trail longer. And I've really been binge watching so much uh, about backpacking. When it's not through hiking season, I have been watching gear videos and, you know, just following my favorite hikers as they go through their preparations and uh, after they finish their trails. Very interesting stuff. And uh, I've always lived near the Pacific Crest Trail since I've been in California. So it really means a lot to me to connect with that that pioneer spirit, that wonderful energy that comes with those hikers because they're just living off the earth for five days at a time. You know, usually it's five, four or five days or so before you can come into the next town. Either you go through the town on the trail or you hitchhike into town so you can get a resupply box at the post office or, you know, just take time off to do your laundry, have a shower, stay at a hostel or a cheap hotel and um, eat town food. So, yeah, it's really fun to run into hikers on my little sections of the trails as well. But I'll tell you, I don't see anybody carrying anything like this anymore. So, let's get into this. There's lots of things in here. These are all things that I actually carried when I did a bunch of my, um, you know, exciting hikes <laughs> of any length of time. So, I'll maybe put a few of my photos in too, so you can see it in action. Because it's hard to it's hard to imagine how big this is. But this is a Kelty backpack. This little logo is still right here, and I got this back in 1978. <laughs> yeah, it's a 70s bag, and back then, sort of the. Hmm, cream of the crop was this external frame backpack, aluminum, super lightweight, <laughs> but it has all these crazy zippers that are really big, and leather patches so you can hang things, and all kinds of things that you wouldn't see on backpacks today. So, let me show you the frame first. So it starts down here where it goes on my hips, all the way up here that goes up over my head. <laughs> That's the frame. Look at this big monster. So this is around my back. And this is the sternum strap across my chest and the hip belt. There's just a little bit of a mesh paneling that kind of supports my back from having this directly on it. It still wasn't that comfortable. And I had to put some clear tape all around here where these pieces go in because with my long hair, even in braids, it would just snag on there and pinch. 
it was adjustable somewhat. You can make it taller or shorter, the frame, but this is how I used it. Clunk, clunk. Uh. And I was happy to carry it. I was happy to carry it all the way because I really wanted to have comfort once I got into camp. And I liked having all my cooking stuff and extra padding. There's a few things that aren't even in here. So it doesn't include clothes or the food or the water. I just have one bottle on the side to show you. So add all that in plus this. <laughs> clothes. Hmm, yeah, it was quite heavy and it was easily 30 to 35 pounds just for a couple of days of camping, hiking, backpacking. So the first item that would be tied onto the bottom here, across here, would be my sleeping bag. <laughs> no, I didn't actually put it on like this. Uh, Squishy. This is the same sleeping bag that I got way back when. My boss actually bought it for me. This is the loose bag that you keep it stored in so it doesn't lose its loft, the down sleeping bag. And it's called Marmot. <laughs> marmot. There's a lot of marmots in the, in the Sierras. They didn't look that cool though. Anyway, I didn't really want to take it out and stuff it into the backpack, so I'll just show you a bit of it. It's a mummy style bag with a hood that comes up over my head. It's super squishy. And you can see, you can really pack it down to just a, about this big in a stuff sack. And it's very lightweight. It's a 15 degree bag because I probably wouldn't ever camp below freezing for, for much time at all, but I want to be comfortable. So I went with the 15 degree bag. And that actually is one of the very best things and one of the lightest things that I had back in the 70s. Everything still works too. It's just absolutely amazing how well this kept. This one was usually across the top or at the bottom too. It's a foam pad. It's kind of destroyed with these very heavy, ridiculous bungee cords to keep it wrapped up. But this is a cut down version. So it was like a little extra pad to put under, maybe under my shoulders or under my hips with my other sleeping pad, or just to have available to be able to sit down somewhere. It's too big. <laughs> These days they make them you know, they cut them down to just you know, like that thickness and maybe half of this. Just enough to put your butt on when you sit down to cook. But I had this big thing. I still use it for day hikes because it's super lightweight. It's just kind of bulky. I must have thought something could happen when I was out there. So there's an expression, you pack your fears. I had so many different types of ace wraps and first aid stuff. This one's still wrapped. This is that cling wrap that stays stuck to itself. Yeah, I had a kind of funny knee at one point, so downhill I used to put this over one of my knees to support it 
that ace wrap's crazy for my weak ankles. They're not weak anymore. After I got horses, they got real strong. And this one actually I use still. This is Luca tape or a version of it, which is great to put on your hot spots on your feet because it'll help prevent blisters. Yeah, this is, um, I kind of moved up to this after using moleskin and blister kits and stuff for years, and I still got blisters um, or putting stuff on after the fact. So I just start using this now because I know a couple of spots that I usually develop blisters. Here's another, another ace wrap. I guess I was really uh, worried about my ankles back then. But not anymore. And depending on when I was going to hike, I would often bring rain gear. Jacket, hood, and pants. <laughs> These actually held up pretty well, but as soon as you put on plastic, even if it has little holes to breathe, you start sweating inside, so you end up getting wet. <laughs> but, you know, if it was cold, at least it would protect you from the cold rain and the wind. It's my little hood. And it would just snap on. Everything has holes in it. So I wouldn't rely on these anymore, but they did help. The zipper still works. Big old heavy zipper. So it even had pockets. And there were little holes under here. My armpits. It was pretty cheap. These days they have very similar that are a little bit more effective material. Hmm, well that's all I have down in this compartment. So I'll show you. It only goes down to about here, and there's a divider, but there's one spot in the corner that goes all the way through because that's where you would slide your tent poles, so the tent poles would fit longwise in their sack. I didn't take my tent out. Ah, well I'll have to show you in another video. It's actually a really wonderful tent and has served me well. But I would definitely get one that has a lot more netting all the way around because over time I realized that you really need all that ventilation, that the tent is the provider of just uh, protection from the elements to keep you dry and to keep you out of the wind. But as far as being warm, you need to have that good padding, so something warm under you, and then the proper sleep clothes and a really good sleeping bag. So that's how you stay warm, because your breath produces condensation. The change of temperature from inside and outside the tent causes condensation. So eventually it starts kind of seeping in, dripping down the sides and coming into the tent. So you want to have as much ventilation as possible to keep that from occurring. So I probably would step up to another um, two-person but very small, lightweight backpacking tent. I'm going to work up to that. And I'll still use the one I have for now. And for car camping, it's just perfect. I just, I love my little tent. But I'll show you that on another, on another video. But it probably weighed at least five pounds, maybe six pounds with the, with all the um, poles and everything and the stakes, which I upgraded. So that was a lot of weight <laughs> adding to all of this that I'm showing you. But wait till you see. Okay. This front pouch, or what I call the front pouch, when it's on my back, it's the farthest back, but <laughs> this one is where I would keep things I wanted to get at 
you know, quickly if we took a little stop. So I would have a map. Sometimes I'd bring a book. Um, just things that I would want to get quickly. Flashlight and things. So, um, it's a gigantic zipper. Metal. But look at it. It's lasted. It's stood the test of time. So here. I'm so exciting to take this out and find all these things in here because I hadn't opened it in a long time. Here's a bandana that I've worn many times. It's also a map. And it's from Mount Whitney. Mount Whitney. One of my favorite places in the Sierras that I've gone to the top of. The highest peak in the continental U.S. 14,000, hmm, 505 feet, I think. Last time I climbed it, the official height was 14,494. <laughs> so, a little topo map here, in case you want to take a look at where you are when you're on your way. <laughs> Line is the trail. Beautiful area. Okay. And always with the straps. Always with the straps. Again, you kind of pack your fears. I don't know if I was afraid that I couldn't hang things or put things or fix things. <laughs> I always had all these things. I'm sure these were attached, you know, because I did hang my tent and sleeping pad and sleeping bag on the outside of the sleeping on the backpack. So I had cordage also because when you get into the higher elevations and there's a lot of marmots, you need to hang your food bag or have a bear bag, a bear barrel, which was required when you do Mount Whitney. You have to have a bear barrel, which is a big, heavy canister, and then you have to tie that on your pack somewhere to keep all your food in and anything that has a scent. So it's good to have extra rope, a little bungee cord. <laughs> and this strap, I think I use this to hold my sleeping bag on. <laughs> this thing a long way is like six ounces or something, eight ounces. And this one, a luxury item, but it actually would warm the tent up nicely. You just hang it from the center of the ceiling. It's made for inside tents. I've had this forever. It has the original, <laughs> the original cord that I tied on it that perfectly fits my tent. So you just open this up like this and you pull. And there's a candle. Well, what's left? I gotta get a new one. I have some new ones. You unscrew this and there's a big spring and you put the candle on it and push this on. And as it burns, it pushes this little sleeve with the candle up higher so it keeps burning. And it has this that absorbs the heat and dissipates the heat so you don't burn anything. Isn't that great? It provides a lot of light. It's glass all the way around. And just this little candle inside a little closed tent provides enough heat to really keep you toasty. These days I just bring a little headlamp, but on the cold nights, it's nice to have this. Candle light is so pretty. Nice. days before cell phones. Yes, before cell phones and GPS. I used a compass. Yes, I did. Look at that. And I could put this one on my maps, my topo maps, and I could navigate my trail. 
Although I didn't do too much bushwhacking or off-road cross-country kind of stuff. But it was good to practice. It was fun. Yes. A nice lightweight handle <laughs> for the days. I thought this was like the clever idea to buy the smallest little flashlight and I could hang it if I needed to. And guess what? <laughs> the batteries are still good. How on earth? I think the last time I used this bag was 2004. 2004. Not bad. Yeah. I love it. Oh yeah, that's right. This one goes from a wide wide light to a Little, nice little camping flashlight. Oh, this is fairly new addition and kind of heavy actually, but <laughs> it's not as heavy as a binocular because it's a monocular. Monocular. So. to use this to check out ravens and, and hawks, look for their nests. <laughs> wow. It works really well and the nice thing is that you can put a lanyard on it and wear it around your neck and uh, it doesn't get ruined because it's rubber all the way around. Yeah. That was a gift. Really cool gift. With this little Velcro pouch. And it has a little strap here so you can put it on your belt if you want it. And last, but probably not the only entertainment that we took with us, set of dice. Five dice. Six dice. Yeah, six. And a little instructions that my friend wrote out for me for a dice game called Chicken. I can't believe I still have this. I'm going to take it with me next time I go camping. I even drew the chicken. Read the rules. So we always had dice or cards or something to read. Now, if you were going to do months of backpacking with a break every couple of days, you probably wouldn't take most of these things because they're very heavy. <laughs> it all adds up and you're carting it all over the mountains. Side pouches at the top used to have snacks and things like that, but this I would keep in there. <laughs> yes, indeed, this weighs a pound, but I have to be prepared. I'm a Girl Scout, I have to have all of the emergency first aid things. I am not going to unpack it. I think I have had to put it all back together a couple times. <laughs> it's, it's a lot in here. <laughs> I'll tell you. 
we have, there's a tube tent, a signal mirror, a high pitch whistle, waterproof, rip proof, uh, first aid, fire, shelter, and travel tips, candle, a flare stick, waterproof matches, nylon cord, safety pins, razor blade, aluminum foil, wire, two feet, duct tape, three feet, high impact waterproof container. That's this. I suppose you could use it to float or something. Uh, Band-aids, butterflies, two by two gauze pads, three by three gauze pads, aspirin, a roll of gauze bandages, and antiseptic swabs. <laughs> I was ready. But I never needed anything. Except for blister stuff. Okay, coming down to the bottom. Side pouch. I think this was <laughs> actually all of the healthy stuff like I had. Not very healthy, but healthy for my brain because it was mosquito repellent. I used to just swipe it on my clothes because I don't like the chemical-y stuff. I would put it over the tops of my shoes, by my the bottoms of my pants, around my collar of my neck, and around the cuffs of my shirt. Because bugs, you know, they definitely bug. And body glove, ankle supports, very tight, but really good when I would really be tired and I knew I'd probably twist my ankle. Um, the infamous blister kit that has been opened and closed a lot. Uh, still has the price, let's see. It was $8.95. This was probably from, uh, at least from 78 or 9 or something, I think. Moleskin, which you would put on after you had a boo boo, you just cut out a hole and put it around your blister. And then they have this stuff. It's like a gel strip that would protect the blister and the open skin. Looks, looks like I used some of it. Now I just use the Luco tape. And some. Oh yeah, never did try this. This is a camping towel. So it comes in this little compressed pack, super, super lightweight. And it opens up quite a bit when you wet it, so cool. Someday I'll use that in my new kit. And a little sewing kit and a needle. Mm -hmm. I think these are antacids. <laughs> Can you imagine how old they are? I think they're huge. I never used to bring aspirin or I think I had anti-diarrheal stuff and and then stomach upset stuff. But now I just use Digest Zen essential oil mix as it works every time. And last on this side to go with my camp cook kit a little piece of a spongy and some camp suds. Camp suds. Camp suds. To do my dishes. Speaking of dishes probably the biggest section. Okay, the bottom of the bag. The heaviest stuff. <laughs> My kitchen. I can't believe I used to carry this hard, full-size cup. But I did. 
along with my reusable dish. It's not that they were heavy. They weren't that heavy, but they were awfully bulky. And trying to fit everything in here was crazy. You don't have to do that anymore. Everything was small. This was getting more on the right trail. Fold a cup. The original fold a cup. So there's this little tab right here, and you just pull on it and open up this little mug. How cute is that? And it certainly was lightweight. Let's see if it even says on here. Made in Sweden. Hmm. Fold a cup original. But it is super lightweight. Then you can use it for pouring or whatever. So that was getting a little bit lighter. Before I got my little individual mini espresso maker, I had kind of worked up to using these for my coffee in the morning. 100% Colombian. And they're like little tea bags with coffee. But, eh, not as satisfying. Clunk. And then, I've shown you this before. This is my little stove setup. You can go see that little video where I took all this hiking and stopped and had a little espresso break. I'll put that link below as well. This is my MSR pocket rocket. This is the stove. It's the original one that I got back then. Crazy. They work so well. You just have the small canister of gas and you twist it on and you open these up. So you could set your pan right on there. And then you turn this to open up the gas and light it with a cigarette lighter or match. Works so well. And it was pretty cheap too. Amazing. Such a good product. And the mini espresso maker. Don't leave home without it. Mini Espress. I do not know where this came from. I believe it was a gift. I know I got these adorable little mugs from my sister-in-law, but I think this was a gift too. Sorry, it was the 70s. I can't remember. And there's the little holder for the espresso. Fill that with water on the bottom. And the water pours through into the coffee and under pressure pushes the coffee up and into your little cup is in another bag. Which is this one. This little thermolite reactor was a sleeping bag liner bag that I found. So if you lost this somewhere on the PCT, you found a good home. You didn't need to carry it anyway. And that's where I have my coffee mm. and the little ring that goes on top of the prongs of the stove. Give a little bit more support. Matches. And two little tiny espresso cups. If you want to see that one in action, you can go to that video where I made espresso for us out on the trail. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things to take. <laughs> I would not give up my little espresso maker. There. 
And then, when I got to camp, I would find the water source, and I would go with this. It's very lightweight, nylon bag, with a plastic liner inside, and a big handle. And you just take this rubber part off and fill the water, put it underneath, and let it all fill up. Put this back on. And carry it back to camp. Boom, 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 boom. Hang it up. And then you have a little water for washing. Not for drinking, just for washing. Open it up like that. It actually leaks a little bit now, but it still carries water. And instead of hanging it up, I just lay it flat and use it like that. And to filter the water, this was what I used. Katadyne. Almost like Katadyne, like Mon Katadyne, but it's spelled differently. This is a great company that makes much lighter products now, but back in the day, this was pretty freaking handy. And this is actually a new one because at some point I passed my old one on to my ex. So he was going camping and didn't think he needed to filter water on his hike. So I gave him mine and replaced it because I liked it so much. There are lots of parts. Basically, it's a hose that goes into the filter and into the water, whatever your source is. And it has a little siphon there to filter out any little rocks and pebbles. And it has this piece of foam so it just floats in the water and doesn't go onto the bottom. And then the scent goes into the filter. And this hose comes out of the top of the filter into your water bottle to be filled. Too many steps. These days, it's direct. There's like a Sawyer squeeze. You just put it on the bottle. You tilt it and squeeze the bottle. It goes through the filter into your bottle. That's it. But this was the way we did it back in the day. So one hose would go in here and the other hose would come out here. And you'd have the hose in the water and you would pump. Pump, 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 pump. And it took about, well, a couple of minutes for a nice liter of water, so, but it worked really well. Anything like this, of course, you have to practice before you get out there. <laughs> not only do you maybe not have the directions with you, but it's not always as simple as you think <laughs> until you know. But this is a good thing to have in case of an emergency anyway, right? So I'll never get rid of it. Here's the gas canister I told you about. All right. With backpacking food, if you're not being very fancy, this is way too big for a few days. This will last for two weeks, probably. So you would probably go with a much smaller one, which is lighter. And extra matches, of course. Waterproof safety matches and regular matches. You pack your fears. Never wanted to be without a light. And... I can't believe I used to bring all of this. Now it is really light, but it's a bit of an overkill. I think I'm going to move them just to my camping box. This is all Lexan, which at the time was the most lightweight utensils you could get. They're reusable, and I'll tell you, this little knife, they're pretty darn sharp. Yeah. 
I'm very happy with these, but why do I have so many? <laughs> I should just have a fork, a spoon, and a knife. But I have two sizes of spoons. This round one, this long one. No, three sizes. I have a teaspoon, too. <laughs> and a spatula. So, way too much for backpacking. And look at this monster. Okay, I had to buy the whole set. Because it's awesome. But I'm never going to carry this whole big thing. It's really heavy. And it's not the greatest to cook in in a campground. You'd much rather bring stuff from home that you're going to use in a campground. So anytime I'm going to backpack, I'm going to bring a fraction of what is in here. Now... Granted, I did do a couple of trips where I cooked for six people. So it was okay to have it. And I think we divided out the weight. But look, this one turned into a frying pan. For those pancake mornings. And then it holds all the rest in this big pot. I'm going to get them out now. Here's the second frying pan. <laughs> Serves as a lid and a frying pan. Within there is this little lid that puts on the medium sized pan, which really, this is probably all I would take. This and the little cup inside, because you have a top enough room to make your meal and this little cup so everything nests together but no I had to have this one too for soup and stuff this is like for four people six people <laughs> Two people or one. It has gotten a lot of wear. I do like to cook when I'm on the trail. I don't know if I could go stoveless because I can cold soak stuff and I can just eat things cold, it's okay. But I like the action of cooking. It's sort of meditative, kind of grounding, relaxing for me. But it's a lot to carry. Yeah, very heavy. But I did it. Because that's how I did it old school. Okay. Last two sides. There's not much in here. This thing takes up all the space. Now, typically I would have like a belt or something that had holders for water bottles. This is the one I started with. <laughs> it's huge. It's like a Boy Scout thing you're supposed to put on your belt. I've never worn a belt. Look at this monster. But it's lasted forever. I did graduate to Nalgene bottles with the wide mouth because it was easier to mix things in or pour things so, and filtering. But I use this one for a very long time. In fact, this thing comes off sometimes. <laughs> I've dropped this bottle a bunch of times. So that took up that whole space. So, you know, I didn't typically keep it there. And the last item. <laughs> All right, now, this is not gross. This is just for digging holes. It doesn't touch anything yucky, okay? I keep it in a Ziploc because it does get dirt and leaves and things on it. And that is my handy-dandy trowel because when you camp and you hike and you leave no trace, you have to dig a cat hole to do your business. So 
in case it's a bad place and it's hard to negotiate, I bring my little spade. It's heavy. It's crazy. The ones I have now are like aircraft aluminum. They're so tiny and so lightweight. Yeah, you can use a stick or something too, but in some places it's a little hard to actually get that deep, deep enough hole. So it's a must. So, and when you go to Mount Whitney, oh my goodness, you have to take all of it out. You can't leave anything. <laughs> all you're allowed to do is pee. <laughs> so pack it in, pack it out. <laughs> But it's worth it to go to Mount Whitney. It's a fantastic adventure. I highly, highly recommend it. Well, that's all I have today. A good look back at the old days. I weighed myself before going up Whitney. We made it into a four-day trip just to really enjoy. We didn't want to rush to the top and back down again because it's hard to get a permit in some of these places, so you really want to enjoy it. So we took our time and camped for three nights, but our packs were heavy, and there's some um, uh, scales there before you start up the trail. And I remember hanging mine to weigh it, and everybody told me that the scales must be wrong, because I think it was 38 pounds. <laughs> and Mount Whitney Trail is up and up and up. <laughs> But definitely worth it. As I say, I had all my fun stuff with me. And a lot of it I've replaced now with much lighter stuff. The backpack to begin with. And um, let's see. I have a better water filtration system. I have lots of lighter weight clothing and rain gear. I'm going to get a different um, sleeping pad, which I also didn't show you. But it's in one of the pictures. It's um, a thermarest, you know, it's compressed to about yay big, like a big roll like that. And you open it up and open the valve and it's supposed to self-inflate. It's only about this thick and it wasn't insulated. So it was not very good from the cold and it was not really comfortable for me because I sleep on my side and the shoulder and the hip are just always in the way. So I'm going to upgrade that to a lighter and more insulated uh, warmer sleeping pad and cut down my sit pad to a smaller size hmm. and use less gear in general. <laughs> That's going to help a lot. So don't forget to check out all of the through hikers that are starting not only the Pacific Crest Trail but also Appalachian Trail and the Continental Divide Trail and the Arizona Trail. Those are the ones that I'm following, so be sure to check out their channels. If you see some of them, I'll put a couple of them that I follow uh, in the description and give them some support because it's an amazing thing that they do, and I just love that they share with us. Some of them have some incredible skills, and when they get to town, they're editing their videos and uploading them for us so we can feel like we're part of their journey, which is just wonderful for me. And it encourages us all to get out and do a little bit more to get back to the fun stuff that we love. So, spring fever, baby. Spring fever. Let's get out and hike. See you there. Bye.